Hello everyone, welcome to 4J Music. Today I'm gonna to start a new series on what to play during altar call, okay? Now when I'm talking about altar call, I know a lot of churches do things differently, but uh, you know a lot of churches that I've served at, the pastors or you know whoever speaking uh, during their closing remarks in the sermon, a lot of times they'll want uh, some light panel music in the background. You know, maybe it's not a full uh, worship team congregational song just yet, you know, but uh, just a, a little bit of background music to set the mood, you know, for people to be able to respond uh, to the altar call, right? First of all is I, I made this video, um, you know, a different video, maybe about four or five weeks ago. Uh, it was called Five Things That Piano Player, uh, Worship Piano Players Need to Stop Doing Right Now. And one of those was talking about volume. When you come in and in, in or out of, of anything, you need to make sure you're using your volume knob. Don't just start playing, okay? That's the first thing I want to tell you. As you get on stage and you're playing behind uh, whoever's preaching, you want to make sure you don't um, come in and start playing at your regular volume, okay? Which is point number two. Uh, don't play at your regular volume, okay? Uh, if you're playing, you know, your worship song and you have your, your regular volume, maybe maybe you're always at three o'clock and that's where uh, your sound people and you have kind of agreed that that's where your, your levels need to be at um, so they can regulate things from behind. Um, then then don't go to that level. You need to actually be a little bit softer. You can work that out with your sound people where uh, a good place to be at for Vulture Call is, but uh, maybe you don't have any any sound people. Maybe you're at a really small church. You don't have uh, the staff or the resources. Uh, just make sure that you're using your ear. Be aware uh, that you're not covering up whoever's speaking. Right? Uh, and the third thing I want to tell you is maybe there is going to be a, um, a, a congregational response song that you're going to play as a worship team. So just make sure you communicate with your worship pastor. Uh, and let's say you're going to be in the key of A for that, then whatever you're playing, make sure you're playing in A so it's not an awkward key change to get into whatever song you're going to play, right? So uh, just some, some things to think about. The other thing I want to tell you is that um, everything I'm going to show you is what I do. Um, and so you may find something more beneficial elsewhere, and that's completely fine. You're not going to hurt my feelings if you go and, and say, I'm not going to do what this crazy dude's saying. He doesn't even know what baseball is or what football is, right? So um, anyway, what, what I want to challenge you to do, though, is to think uh, about uh, some of these relationships with some of the notes, okay? Because really, that's how you make something sound interesting without it being super complex. And everything I'm going to show you is not very complicated at all. You'll see what I'm what I'm talking about. But at the same time, it it does it does keep a little bit of interest and in, intrigue in there. If you were coming on here and and you're expecting me to tell you some new chord progression that nobody's ever heard played before, I'm sorry, I don't have that for you. Uh, but I do have again some ideas that you can just create little hooks, little um, themes, little um, you know musical uh, motifs or whatever if you want to call them that, uh, where you're gonna um, hopefully be able to build on that and copy that and then move that, you know, as you go to a different chord, you know, build on that same thing, okay? Uh, but anyway, this is what I'm gonna tell you is that uh, everything that I'm gonna do in this particular uh, video is gonna be built around the minor second, okay? When you play a scale, and I'm gonna be in C just to kind of keep it, um, you know, uh, just basic there with no flats or sharps so you can see that. Um, when, when you play your C scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C, you have the B to the C. That's a minor second. Uh, there are no notes in between that. And that's what I'm going to be referring to when, you know, as far as the, you know, uh, really working that minor second B to C. Now those notes also have names. Okay. In that particular scale, B is the leading tone and C is called the tonic. Uh, down the road, at some point, I'm going to make a video where I'm going to talk about dominance and secondary dominance. And those are going to be some very key notes in that scale. That's not this video, but I'm going to be using those two notes primarily to build this uh, uh, altar, uh, altar call um, type flowy music. And you'll see what I'm talking about, okay? Um, again, that relationship from B to C. Now, uh, depending on what chord I am, the B or the C might be uh, a seventh or might be a, a, a ninth or might be some sort of suspension. And, you know, that will change as I'm moving around, okay? Um, so I just want you to keep that in mind and I'll, I'll be talking through as I'm playing through this, okay? Okay, let's assume we've already snuck in volume-wise. We're going to start an A minor on the sixth chord. And notice we went C, B, descending C, B. That's going to be a little motif that we're going to play around with as we toggle back and forth between the A minor and the F chord. So right there, instead of going to the B, we went to the A, just to kind of add a little closure, something a little bit different on that last time before we repeat the whole thing again. Again, just playing around with C, B, 
And all I'm doing underneath is really just rolling the chords, adding some seconds, ninths, uh, maybe some sevenths in there. But I want you to notice what I'm going to do here. We're going to go and go ahead and change the chord progression and go to a C over E, which is the relative major of A minor. Uh, and we're going to also change the notes uh, in the right hand. We're going to change the order um, and go B, C instead of C, B. And so that just adds a little bit of variety, even though we're using the same two notes, okay? Um, before we go back and repeat the whole idea again, as we're doing here. Now, something I probably wouldn't do in um, on an ultra call setting, depending on you know where we were at with the intensity, is do those octaves. Um, I'm doing those here just so you can see the the again the here really hear that C B in there. But um, depending on what's going on, I, I may or may not do that because uh, it might be too heavy for what's going on. And all the fills, stuff that I'm doing underneath, I'm consciously trying to set myself up to be seamless so I can repeat the either CB or BC motif. So just keep that in mind as you're working on your fills underneath. All right, and it really is that simple, just uh, repeating those two notes and kind of moving the chords around that. What I want you to understand on that is that the ear is drawn to the familiar. Um, you know, it's kind of like watching The Office and you watch it again, uh, even though you know what it's going to end like, you know, there's a little bit of like um, just assurance that, you know, it's going to be OK. Right. And, you know, you may watch the most um, comically, you know, stressful uh, episode of that, but, you know, it's going to be OK in the end. And so the same thing is with this is, you know, even though you, you're going to have a lot of tension dealing with those two notes, even even those two notes with themselves between themselves have a lot of tension uh you're gonna you're gonna be resolved you know that the ear will, will uh expect to hear that resolution that it's already heard it before and so i encourage you to look at that and, and play around with that uh theoretically you can do the same thing in the same key but looking at the other minor second uh, hot spot in the scale e to f and uh and just really play around with that as well in case you wanted to see what that looked like we're going to start here on an f major chord the right hand is going down F, E. You're going to see that on the first three chords here, now on the D minor, then over to A minor as well. And on this last chord, we're actually going to go to a G, and we're going to go F, G. We're going to go up with the right hand. So that gives us a little bit of closure before we repeat the whole sequence again. And again, just playing around with these two notes here, these uh, two notes that are right next to each other in the scale. Uh, it creates a little bit of attention and then resolution on that last chord. So anyway, I just hope this is helpful for you. Again, this is going to be just a simple way to kind of um, uh, break the monotony of just playing, you know, random block chords uh, during your ultra call time uh, and actually have a little bit more of a theme that re that is recurring. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can kind of play around with that and be able to have something familiar that the ear will be drawn to. Um, and at the same time will be interesting, but not overplaying. So anyway, I hope this is helpful and uh, be looking out for the next video uh, where I'll be talking about one of my favorite topics uh, in Spanish worship. That's something else that I do a lot uh, um, on the stage and you'll get to hear me talk about why I like to do some of the Spanish worship songs, right? Thanks, bye-bye.